One of the most awaited presentations was on the subject of Tarsiva erlotinib given as a post-operative treatment for patients with early stage lung cancer. There were actually two presentations that came out this year. One is called uh, the Radiant Trial, which was a randomized large study of either observation or two years of Tarsiva. Another trial was called SELECT and particularly focused on patients with an EGFR mutation and gave two years of uh, Tarsiva to those patients. So let's talk about what those showed in a broad population, in the mutation positive population, and what you or you think that the lung cancer community should be doing with this. Why don't you start? This was a long-awaited trial, I think, for, for many of us. Um, the, and as you said, Jack, there were two different studies, uh, one study within the, a smaller study within the larger study that were reported, the, the results of which were both interesting and, and will um, impact things I, that I do. The Radiant trial was a large study, about a thousand patients that were randomized at the end, uh, having had a tumor taken out, so theoretically cancer-free, to receive adjuvant or lotinib or at or, or lotinib after resection or placebo. And the primary endpoint of that trial in all patients was disease-free survival. And we learned at this meeting that there was no difference, no significant difference in disease-free survival amongst the patients that were treated with Tarsiva versus those patients that were treated with placebo. Now, there was also a subset analysis that was done in patients with EGFR mutations. And it is, there were 160 patients in, in this trial. Um, it's not surprising that in this trial, the patients who had EGFR mutations, who were treated with Tarsiva, had a longer disease-free survival on the order of 46 months compared to those patients with EGFR mutations who didn't have, weren't treated with adjuvant there, adjuvant Tarsiva, who had a disease-free survival of 26 months. So a, a, a difference or an improvement of 20 months. And that's the subset of EGFR mutation positive patients in Radiant, correct? That's correct. So what do I take from this? Well. I think the easier the, the easier issue to address is uh, the larger study. Um, the primary endpoint of the larger study was if you add Tarsiva at the end of after you've had your tumor resected, does that improve the amount of time until the, the cancer comes back? And I think the answer for all comers is no. And so I won't use this for patients uh, in that in in that scenario. The Trickier question is, uh, what do you do with the patients that you take out their tumor and you find an EGFR mutation um, and uh, they're treated with adjuvant chemotherapy? Do you add the Tarsiva after that or not? Um, in my mind, the question is Tarsiva now versus Tarsiva later. If the results of this trial had showed an improvement in overall survival or improvement in the cure rate of patients with treatment with Tarsiva, I, I would probably feel differently. Um, but given the fact that, that uh, there was no measured improvement in the overall survival of patients treated with Tarsiva, I think I'll continue to wait and use it at the time that patients progress. Nasser, you spoke to this question both about this work, particularly the subset, and the select trial that was pre-selected patients who had an EGFR mutation. So what, what are your thoughts here? Well, I, I think the first point that should be underscored is that uh, the fish is dead. We, we don't, uh, fish positivity is not a fun, it, it doesn't measure a function of whether patients should be receiving Tarsiva, whether it's in the metastatic setting or whether it's in the adjuvant setting. So this study answered that question. It's about mutations. Mm -hmm. and it's about mutations in the metastatic setting as well. We uh, are way too early to know if there's any survival difference with giving adjuvant Tarsiva. This trial could neither answer that question in the affirmative or in the negative. 
it's a subset analysis. There's not a long, long enough follow-up. There are too few deaths to report. Um, so, and the study is no way, no, nowhere near power to show something like that. So we could not definitively answer that question. What we have to do, I think, is we have to look at uh, whether there's a pattern seen in other studies. So uh, to that extent, there are two other studies that I think are instructive. One is the SELECT trial, and one is a data set for Memorial Sloan Kettering. So the SELECT trial was data presented at this year's meeting uh, at ASCO, and they took essentially 100 patients who had EGFR mutations and had undergone surgical resection. About 45% had stage one disease, and the other half of patients had either stage two or stage three disease. And in the adjuvant setting, uh, and some received chemotherapy. And in the adjuvant setting, these patients were given Tarceva. And they, sent as a, they set as a benchmark what they call the two-year disease-free survival rate of about 75%. And that was based upon some data from Memorial Sloan Kettering. And they got almost 90% two-year disease-free survival. And what's really striking is in stage three patients, in stage three patients, the recurrence rates at two years typically are 75%. The recurrence rate in this population of patients, given Tarceva, was 9%. That's astonishing. They had only 29 patients in the entire study recur, and only four of those patients recurred while they were on Tarceva. And so Dr. Kamage, during the discussion of this radiant subset, brought up a point about, well, are we just not giving this drug long enough? And on the surface, it seems like, well, for adjuvant therapy, we give three months. In colon cancer, we give six months of adjuvant therapy. But if we think of a similar model in breast cancer, they give 10 years of adjuvant hormone therapy. They give 10 years. And uh, that seems crazy. But randomized studies, more than one, have shown that 10 years is better than five years. And in GI stromal tumors, three years of a targeted agent is better than one year of a targeted agent. So it brought up the question of whether we should just be giving these patients more of the drug, because the patients do recur when they're off the drug. Well, the challenge, I think, is the question of, A, you know, is three years better than two, is 10 years better than five, is indefinite better than 10? Are we just suppressing? And if so, you know, how feasible is it from a side effect profile, from a, t from a cost profile, and from the perspective that some of these patients will not recur, they're already cured, and same with tamoxifen. Absolutely. Same with ten years of uh, you give you give patients five years of arimidex. That's five years of arthralgias. It's not a cheap drug either, mm -hmm. and the recur the reduction in recurrence in absolute numbers in women with breast cancer is like four percent. Right. Well, if we were debating that point, it would be a different place. And I think these are very fair questions to ask. I mean, if you can't see the gap between two curves on a uh, on a Kaplan-Meier plot, then that's an issue. But uh, I, I think your point's very well taken about uh, particularly the higher risk patients, the stage three patients. Uh, it's obviously something where there's gonna be a lot of medical judgment involved and, uh, and I think a lot more head scratching and debate. I, I don't know, I think it'll be a while before we get a lot more data on this. Well, the memorial data is also instructive, so I, I don't want us to ignore the memorial data. When the EGFR mutation was discovered, the folks at Memorial Sloan Kettering started to sequence all their patients who had had surgery. This goes back to 2000, patients as far back as 2002, even though the mutation was discovered after that. They went back and sequenced these patients. And from 2002 to 2008, they looked at how their patients had done. And of course, before EGFR mutations were known, these patients all receiving adjuvant chemotherapy. So they had 167 patients with uh, EGFR mutations in their data set. And two thirds of them had received adjuvant chemotherapy because the mutation hadn't been discovered and they weren't using. But one third of the patients, they as a center started to give their patients the Tarceva for two years in the adjuvant setting. They started to do that. 
And then they looked at how those patients had done. And those are, I don't know if they're consecutive patients, and they're certainly not randomized patients, but the, you know, there shouldn't be any particular biases. They're the same patients. It's just one practice versus another. And what was interesting in their experience was that they showed a substantial reduction or improvement in disease-free survival at two years. They also showed a trend towards improvement in overall survival. It wasn't statistically significant. Again, this is all the flaws of the study uh, design. Uh, but there was clearly a pattern there that I think was replicated in the SELECT trial, that was replicated in this subset. The question that I think we come to is, is this sufficient or do we need more? That's the question, because I don't think anyone is going to doubt that disease-free survival is going to be improved by giving this drug. The question is, will it cure more people? What's the meaning of it? And so I brought that up in our discussion at ASCO. Now, I do think that a phase three trial is warranted, and I certainly support a phase three trial. Uh, but I don't think you can ignore that substantial of a difference. I, uh, I'd like to speak to that. For, um, I was a fellow at Memorial when that study was ongoing, and, and I learned a couple things from it, and being one of the people that was uh, seeing these patients on adjuvant erlotinib. It's a different uh, ball game to get someone to take a drug in the absence of disease for two years or and, and longer. I mean, you know, if we want to compare it to moxpin, okay, well, you know, you get a little hot flash, you, you know, you put on a little Effexor. Uh, th that, I'm not saying that tamoxifen is a, is a, is a easy drug compared to Tarceva, but we have to uh, think very hard about the implications of having people on this drug for a long time. What I mean to say is it's a different prospect to get patients to be on Tarceva uh, when they're cancer-free. <laughs> right. The other yeah. thing that I, I want to say, having been a fellow at Memorial but then taken a job at Northwestern, is I see the difference in the patient populations. And, you know, uh, spin it the way you like, but uh, the patients at uh, Memorial uh, in surgical um, in surgical sub, uh, data, in metastatic data, they are a select population in many ways, and so. And you're at Northwestern, not the VA, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. there is um, there is something to uh, an adjuvant trial um, that is where you allude to the fact that there is a subset of patients that are benefiting. But I worry about, uh, about having uh, Tarceva be a drug that we try to generalize to a general population with EGFR mutations. Now, one other point from this work, and I think it was more prominent in Radiant than Select, was the proportion of people who dropped off the treatment before two years. And I don't think it was a coincidence that the radiant trial patients who were not selected for EGFR positivity, mutation positivity, had a much lower rate of staying on for long. What they didn't tell you, and, and, I, and I don't know the numbers, because I didn't hear it, but maybe you could tell me, is what was the rate of drop off in the patients who had EGFR mutations? So in other words, you know, Maybe the drop-off is more, maybe it's right. less. Now, in the SELECT trial, two-thirds of patients got at least 22 months of right. therapy. Well, then I think it's really an issue of this motivation. You're more motivated if you have an EGFR mutation, but you're by far most motivated if you've got something to measure that you're suppressing versus wondering if you're on alligator repellent and not doing anything. And you can dose reduce, but I, I think Melissa's point is a good one. This is not the easiest drug, and to take it, when you may be cured for years and years. But you know, that's, that's the case for adjuvant therapy, period. Yeah, we give true. patients three months of chemotherapy and make them tired and anemic and lose hair and have nausea and at risk for pneumonia and infections, when 95% of the time it didn't make any difference. They're either already cured or they're <laughs> going to recur anyhow. Um, and so a bit of this is, uh, I think, uh, somewhat of a mindset. I think that uh, what we need to underscore is in patients with uh, lung cancer, and the EGFR mutated population is going to do better than the wild type population. 
But uh, when their cancer recurs, they don't live very long. And most recur, and most recur in a short period of time. And when you're 57 years old, and you're not even retired, and you got a couple of kids and one in college, and you're told you have stage three lung cancer, and you know there's an 80% chance that in the next 18 to 24 months, your cancer's coming back, and then you're likely not to live very long with metastatic disease afterwards. That's a tough pill to swallow. So I think, um, you know, uh, this is in contrast to many of the things that we've seen in lung cancer for decades. There's some real hope there. And I think that this is potentially substantial. Having said all that, to be excited about it, to find it compelling and persuasive, does not mean you don't think it should not be part of a phase three trial. And uh, I'd love to have uh, a phase three trial if that can be completed. And that's always a challenge, is to complete those trials. That's a good point. I, I think uh, the phase three trial, both in uh, using Tarceva for patients with EGFR mutations and Crizotinib for patients with, with ALK rearrangements, um, is going to be a step forward for us. And, and I think we need to come together as a group of thoracic, uh, thoracic oncology doctors, lung cancer doctors, and, and uh, commit to getting that trial done.